right, we are here with uh, writer Jeff Parker, whose new stint on the Hulk with Hulk 25 uh, is out this Wednesday. So, uh, what's it going to be like? There's going to be smashing in it, <laughs> and uh, and sharing, and love, and understanding. That's <laughs> The Hulk, you know. Yeah, well, of course, Red Hulk is very well known for his understanding and caring. Yeah, it, that's what it's going to be. No, it's it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a new beginning for that character. Because mm -hmm. um, now we can start with the idea that every, people generally know it's it's General Ross, the guy mm -hmm. who who bothered the original Hulk most of his life, mm -hmm. and uh, got too close to the flame, and essentially has become what he hated. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now he's got to figure out what he what he's going to do. And uh, Bruce Banner uh, brings in Steve Rogers, former Captain America, to tap him into service and kind of give him some purpose because otherwise he's going to sit around and rot in a gamma base uh, cell uh, his whole life. And he's really powerful and useful and he's actually not a bad guy. He just has some stupid ideas. And uh, you know they're they're going to give him a, a chance to uh, to help out with what's called scorched earth. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, Modok and Leader, fresh out of both being busted down from being super intelligences, uh, since they haven't been able to check in with their computer system in a month, it's started this doomsday protocol, which launches every doomsday plan they ever came up with that they scrapped because they thought well, we didn't want to really destroy the world. Mm -hmm. And now they don't care because it's not their world. So, who was that? Was that a ghost? I don't know. The, uh, anyway, just every crazy uh, world-ending scenario starts happening. Uh, Steve Rogers is tapping everybody he can. I, I'll even, you'll even see it over in the Thunderbolts mm -hmm. that they have to go deal with some of it. Um, and Red Hulk is... Uh, perfectly suited for this, especially since he kind of helped get them in that position. Mm -hmm. So there, he's going to go be an active good guy, or try. Yeah, well at the, the Cup of Joe panel at Comic-Con, they were saying it was going to be about his redemption. So is, is that basically his his path to redemption, is is fighting against these people, is uh, it yeah, I won't making say, amends? It's, it's him maybe understanding what it's like being on the other side of being a big monster mm -hmm. uh, for a change. Uh, it's hard to say whether he's actually going to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to describe the comic as he's the great Santini with uh, gamma powers. You know, he's uh, he is who he is. He's not going to just change overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, but but maybe poked in the right direction, he can at least do things you approve of. Mm -hmm. Do you think the root of his former evil was his grudge against the Hulk and Bruce Banner, or do you think it was a larger part of his personality? I don't know. I think it, it, we, we get into that. He had a lot of obsessions or whatever. He lost his wife at an early age and, mm -hmm. you know, and a military careerist, didn't have a whole lot of time for his daughter, but he loved her very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Bruce Banner came along, essentially the what Kirby and Lee put out there is perfect a classic myth that breaks down to a family level is, is just a guy who just thought you're not good enough for my daughter mm -hmm. to Bruce Banner you know and, mm -hmm. and it happened that Bruce Banner was a big green giant and and that this other guy had the might of the military to to throw around spending billions of dollars a year trying to kill this this thing and, and now he's stuck in the irony of the fact that he can only become he doesn't want anybody to know that Ross is still alive. He had a, a hero's uh, funeral mm -hmm. uh, with honors, and uh, you know he does. It, should he come back now, he would be court-martialed. He, he doesn't want anybody to know that you know he's Ross. Mm -hmm. And so now the only person he can ever be Ross around is Banner. Yeah. But, wah, wah. Wait, does Betty? <laughs> Betty knows though. Betty knows, yeah. but she's still not uh, going up to him in the book. But you get the strong yeah. implication: the reason Bruce is even trying to help is for yeah. Betty's sake. Are any of the other Incredible Hulks going to be in this Hulk? They kind of have their own like family hour now at yes, Incredible Hulk. Yes, the Hulk family. Um, <laughs> mostly for right now, we're going to feature A Bomb. Mm -hmm. He's got his own backup, so mm -hmm. you get to see Rick, who actively wants to be a hero mm -hmm. and, and knows how to be one because he's hung around nothing but the greatest heroes in the Marvel universe 
uh, ever since he was 16. Mm -hmm. So, and now he's one of the most powerful heroes. So you're going to go see him fight a giant monster mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and kind of start to figure out what kind of hero he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found it kind of striking that with Bruce Banner's Hulk, he starts out as a scientist. And with Red Hulk, he starts out as a military man. How do you think that affects their approach, if at all, like as Hulks? Well, certainly, if they have any common ground, it's when they're Hulks. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. Can I use that? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, they... That's the thing with them. They, they probably both resent the fact that they actually do have more in common than they want to admit. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we'll be carving away. You'll be seeing more of Ross. And I, What I especially like of this is the way Gabriel Hardman draws him. Mm -hmm. um, he looks uh, just like a tough old dude. He, he's the kind of guy that most guys think, hey, I want to be that way when I'm 60. You know, mm -hmm. this uh, old guy with big forearms who still scares everybody in the room. Uh, yes, yeah, his, his personality doesn't change a whole lot when he becomes Red Hulk, you know. Yeah. But there are some differences, and you'll start to be able to tell the difference, like, of when he's Ross. He, he probably would have mellowed out, at, you know, by now, but then, of course, he's suddenly really powerful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he does have a tendency to just go off the handle and do whatever he feels like as Red Hulk. Something good's going on yes, in there. A party over by, there. By the way, we're having this interview in Awesomeville. Yes, at Periscope Studios. Yeah, this is, uh, but specifically, this room is called Awesomeville. Oh, I didn't know that. Isn't it? It is Awesomeville, yeah. Yeah, where uh, Dustin Weaver and Jeremy Barlow work. I don't know if you can kind of get them in. know they going to be Dustin's on camera, room. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy, what are you working on? I am working on uh, Death Clock Metalocalypse Issue 3. Yes. I which... get, thank you, because I cannot get that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can say what Dustin's working on. He's working on S.H.I.E.L.D. I know how to say that. Excellent. Excellent. S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, this is, is this the second book you've worked on with Gabriel Hardman? Yes. I mean, Actually, the, fir the very first job we did together at Marvel was a Hulk book. It was, okay. uh, it was the monster-sized Hulk where he meets the Frankenstein monster. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So it's kind of perfect that we both ended up back on Hulk. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, of course, we did Agents of Atlas and Atlas. Yep, yep, yep. And Atlas is, is wrapping up. Yes. Uh, in two weeks, I think you'll be getting the, the final issue. The final issue. So how is it going to wrap up? Because in issue four, it's like they find themselves in the other dimension. They're in other bodies. It doesn't look like we have time to wrap it up. And they've been, they've been, they've been found out. 3D Man turns out as the key to three different dimensions and, and all kinds of stuff. So Yeah, a lot of stuff happens in the last issue. Mm -hmm. But I'm not rushing any of it. This is exactly mm -hmm. as long as I was going to take to tell the story whether okay. I ended the book or not. Yeah. It was, it was just when we decided to do it, I thought, well, this is a good place to end. This is a really good, I, I feel like this is a very atlas -y story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a good one to leave off on for now, and then maybe, you know, we'll get to do some yearly specials or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'll try to to force it out there as a monthly again anytime soon. Yeah. Do you think any of the characters will be popping up anywhere else in the Marvel Universe, or are they mostly stick to, to their own team? Uh, there. I certainly left it so they can. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, Namora always gets out somehow. Yeah. And uh, Venus will be turning up in a Chaos War. Yeah. Uh, event that's going on soon. And mm -hmm. uh, I assume Gorilla Man probably will. He's. I mean, you, you always need a gorilla somewhere. It's true. 